Oh, I found a secret. So if you've ever seen watercolor artists, they take their palette and they just have a big puddle of mush in the middle. They put some water in there, then they just add a couple of colors, and then they just paint from that same puddle. They'll paint a hundred different colors, but it's only from one color of paint. It's right in the middle and they just keep adding different colors to it and they make it sloppy and messy. I can't stand doing that, but I do that with one palette. I have one palette I'll do that with, and I'll show you how this works. It works much better than just using the colors individually or mixing them on a small little spot or something. You just put all the colors in one spot, no matter what you're doing, a blue, a red, a green, a yellow, it doesn't matter. They just all go in the same puddle of water. And you can do this with that. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is my Holbein palette, and you can see all of the colors that are up there. You see them all. I have this laid out completely different than I prefer my layout of color. But it was the first professional uh, paint that I got watercolor, so I put them in this palette, and I haven't moved them. It works fine, and it has these giant plastic wells, this palette. I will try and find a link to the which one it is. Because I really do like the palette, I hate that the paint that is in it is fixed in place. It's always in that same spot, and I can't move them around. But I will say that I love how huge these wells are. They're bigger than full pans. You can fit a ridiculous amount of paint in there. And this is the Holbein set that I got was the smaller tubes, but the whole tube fit in there. So it was a wonderful experience, and the first professional grade that I got before I ever started with Daniel Smith. But here's the point. If you notice through this whole thing, I'm going to be taking the the paint and just putting it directly in the center in that one well. I'm going to keep the, the camera on that well so you can see how much I use it. And I just put the same colors on there. Sometimes I take a straight color and go right into it. But here's the thing. I do not rinse off the brush. So I will never dip back into water to rinse the brush. I may do it to add some more water to that puddle but never to rinse off the brush. I just keep going into all the different wells with dirty brush. I don't know, now listen, I can't do this with anything else. When I have my other palettes, I cannot do that. For some reason in this palette, I can do that. I allow myself to do that in this palette. Otherwise, that drives me insane when I see someone dipping a dirty brush into like a yellow and it turns all brown and green. That drives me insane. But on this palette, for some reason, I try and force myself to do it just because I like the result. When you get to the end of this, you have a great result. Now, you see this happen a lot with people that use, like, the, the butcher trays. They use the, the they put their paint around the edge of a butcher tray. They It's not even separated. The water just runs into everything. It just goes into a giant puddle that you do in the middle and then they're slapping the paint on the side and you can't even tell what the colors are around the whole thing they have to know where they are but for some reason the i still get bright vibrant colors you see right here there's no color grading here i did not color grade this at all this is just the bright colors that come out of this and you'll see in the painting how it comes out i absolutely love how this works i really have to work at it i think to do maybe i I'm not really sure how many more of these I'm going to do, but I'm going to definitely do at least a couple more of these because I absolutely love how they come out. And I want you to be able to feel that freeness of, you know, my other watercolor palettes, I've got to rinse off like a hundred times before I go into the next color. I don't mix the colors uh, on the inside the pans. I don't mix them in the palette, even I have a separate palette that I mix on. And so nothing can contaminate anything else. But I love doing this. And the freedom that you feel when you do this is just amazing. And it, of course, it's a lot of paint in one puddle. You can get a vast array of colors from that. You see, I got I have purples in there. I have oranges and yellows. And it's just, you can get whatever color you want out of there. Like really cool reds and then almost orange reds. And just beautiful colors. And it doesn't look like mud. Um, maybe on the palette it may look like mud, but when you put it on the paper, it doesn't really look like mud. It looks it looks nice. It looks bright, vibrant color, and I really enjoy that. And you'll see, then I'll go in with some ink. And again, I love doing these types of 
drawings, these things where you just, I put in a, this, take the brush, take the brush that has the ink in it, and then I just go across and just make a mess, and then go back in with some uh, detail fine liner and connect all the dots. Just put everything exactly how I want to do it. It's one of my favorite ways to work now, and I've never done this before. This is a recent discovery of mine. I just absolutely love the way it looks. So, And I hope you do. I hope you try one of these or get something out of it. Because, again, I just I, I can't explain what it feels like to have that freeness to do something like this. It's just a great experience overall. Now, I also want to mention, I think that this may be the way to harmonize a painting. If you ever look at some watercolor artists and you say, yeah, but their colors always look, they look harmonized. They look like they belong together and they're not so separate. So a lot of the paintings I do, then maybe I'll flip one of them up here. But you can tell the watercolor is completely separate colors. They're just completely uh, pure colors for themselves. They're not really harmonious as far as they don't blend into each other as nicely. This blends into each other very nicely because they're all from the same puddle. So they're going to have some of the same colors in there. Even if you add a color to the puddle later, like I add a little bit of purple later on to the orange and do that, it, it doesn't, it's okay because there's some of that in there and it just kind of blends it very nicely. It just, I really enjoy the way it comes through. Okay, now I wanna just talk to you really quickly about something that I keep hearing people say and I think it's garbage. I don't think you should follow this advice at all. And that's that people tell you never do art for free because people will not value it. I don't think that's true at all. As a matter of fact, I know some people that I've given art to that value it greatly. And as a matter of fact, they won't part with it. They framed it. They put it up on their mantle or they put it up on their wall. And they absolutely love it. And it's just a matter of whether or not you want to do this thing. And that's the whole point of it. If you want to create art and give it to someone or give it for something else, maybe a charity, then maybe they're doing an auction, you're gonna give them the art so that they can auction it off, whatever the case is. If you believe in whatever it is that's happening, go ahead and give away your art. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no rules that says you can't do that. It doesn't devalue your other art just because you gave a piece to someone else. That is a load of crap. You do what you want to do with your art. It's your expression. You can put that expression on anything else that you want to put it on, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't let someone tell you that you absolutely you can't do that. Don't do that. Just ignore those people. And while we are on that subject... I'm tired of also people telling everybody else how they should price their art. Listen, I understand that some people feel a little strange asking for money for their art and they don't price it properly and they're kind of cutting themselves out of some money, leaving some money on the table. But if you're happy with how you're pricing your art and you're happy to get that amount of money for whatever it is from your art, then just do that. Don't listen to other people that... There, there are artists on YouTube that are telling people, oh, when you sell your art cheap, it devalues all the rest of our art. No, it doesn't, because you're not the same person painting it. So that person's art is worth more than this person's art, or they sell it for more than what this person sells it for. That doesn't devalue everybody else's art just because you sell it a little bit cheaper. That's ridiculous. That's nonsense. If you're happy with getting $5 on a 24 by 82 painting, then that's what you get because that's what you're happy with. As long as you're happy with what you're getting. Do I think that's a little cheap? Yes, I think that would be very cheap for something that size. But I'm just saying, if you're happy with it and you feel like you're getting your money's worth for what you're doing, then just do that. Don't worry about these other people that are telling you how, how terrible you are. You're damaging the entire art community. That's nonsense. You're not damaging anything. And later, if you want to charge more, you charge more. And here's the other thing. If you don't want to do a formula, people are, oh, well, how much should I charge for my artwork? And do, should I do an hourly rate or should I do that? I usually, this is what I do. You don't have to do it, but this is what I do. Usually I do length plus width 
times a multiplier depending on what the medium is and that just gives me my basic range and then if I like the piece more or I don't want to sell it as much I raise the price on it and make it a little bit higher if it's something I'm happy to get rid of and not that I don't want to get rid of it but you know what I mean that I'm happy to sell and give it to someone else and find a home somewhere else then I price it a little bit lower and let them buy that it just gives me a range so I do length plus width times a multiplier depending on the medium you know certain mediums cost more money so you might do times three or times four or times two it just depends on what it is you're doing and, and what you're happy with but it's not it's not a hard and fast rule if I do something that I love and I see that it should only be like fifty dollars but I love it I might put it for like seventy five a hundred dollars because I'm not really wanting to get rid of it but I will for the right price it's whatever you're happy with it's whatever you feel fulfilled with when you give that art away that you're like, okay I got something worth that art to me and that's all it really is if it's five dollars it's five dollars don't let other people guilt you into the, how much you have to charge or what kind of formula you should do this times this and just do what you do and be happy with it that's really all it is find some other people maybe that you enjoy their work see what they're charging and if you're not as good as them you might want to go a little lower it goes with demand too if you can't sell your artwork there's no point in putting it up for that price you don't charge five thousand dollars for something that should be a hundred dollars it's not what you do but if eventually you may get there if that's what you want to do but it doesn't have to be all about that it just is about look this is what I feel my art is worth people are buying it at this price and I'm happy giving that giving it to them at this price and that's all of theirs to it and later if you have less available and a higher demand you might raise the price a little bit just a little bit just to get a little bit extra say okay I don't have as much available I still need to make money so don't don't ever cheat yourself in and when I say that I don't mean with money I mean don't cheat yourself by saying oh did I just give away this piece too too cheaply and whatever price it so that you're happy when it sells that's all you have to do and you can never go wrong doing that I'm happy that if it sells I get this amount of money and I'm happy with that they got a good deal and I feel like I'm getting what I'm worth so that's that's all you have to do let me know down below what do you do if you're gonna if someone asks you for art and you're going to price it do you do that do you just say this is what I'm happy with or do you try and figure out some kind of formula and hourly wage and how much did this cost me times this and how it just tell me how crazy you make yourself when you try and sell art I'll tell you the only way that I will never price art is by an hourly wage and let me tell you why because as I get better at something it takes me less time to complete it so if I was to then charge based on an hourly rate as I improve I'd be making less money that doesn't make any sense I charge less money for something with a greater skill so I don't think that's the way to go ever I think that you should do whatever it is that based on the size of the piece or based on um, the detail of the piece or anything like that or based on the medium those things are okay but the whole hourly wage thing when people try and figure out well this only took you this long to do it how long did that take you and it it's just that drives me now but now I don't also want to say don't freak out at people that ask you how long something took you said so this took me this amount of time it doesn't and they're like oh because you know in their head they're trying to figure out how much you make hourly but that has nothing to do with it so when they ask you that question don't get insulted don't freak out at them don't lose your crap over it. so many artists do that they like freak out someone's oh it, it doesn't matter how long it took me it's just that's not you're like jumping down their throat before you're even talking to them so instead of doing that just oh well, it took me this long and it's something that I've been working on for a very long time so I'm actually I've gotten it down to getting taking about this long but that's boy that was a lot of work and just just something like that just something very uh, just very passive not something you're not jumping down their throat you're not you're letting them know that this took time to get here but you're not making it a point to do that you're not trying to shove that down their throat and shove it in their face it's just that makes for bad that someone's actually asking you because they're interested they want to know and you're just jumping down their throat all the time don't do that to people that's terrible you have an audience someone who wants to see what you're doing and you're attacking them before you even know what's going on so 
Don't do that. You you don't have to justify it. You can if you want to. You don't have to. You don't have to justify anything. Say, this is how much I charge for this. It, it took me this. This one took me this amount of time, or this one took me that amount of time. And let them think whatever they want to think. If they want to think, oh well, that's ridiculous. You're making fifty dollars an hour. Well, you know what? Good for me. That's exactly right. That's what I'm making per hour. And that's fine. There's nothing. You don't go to someone else's job and when they're working at their, oh, you work in an office, you work in corporate, you're accounting, you, you manage the books, you're a data analyst. How much do you make an hour? Oh, that's how much you make an hour? I can't believe that. It's ridiculous. That's No one does that. So instead, you just, if they say, how long did that take? Just be honest. You can say that. You say, oh, it just took me an hour. It took me two hours. Whatever it took you, three, four hours, however long it took you. And then, and then who cares if they start going in their head and how much money you make? Good for you. And they're like, oh, you make that much money an hour? I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. And then you can just blow it off that way. There's no need to freak out at people. And if they're really that concerned, they're probably not going to be collecting your art anyway. So who cares? Just let it go. Listen, you're an artist. You can't be so uptight all the damn time. Just relax a little bit and just relax. Just take it easy. Someone asks you to be honest with them. Nothing wrong with that. So thumb up the video if you're going to be honest with the next person that tries to insult you by saying you're not worth that much money per hour. But you're going to say, you know what, I am worth that much money per hour and that's what I'm going to charge you. And if you don't want to be here, you don't have to be here. I don't have you in a cage. I haven't locked you up and chained you to the wall. Not yet. And just go on your merry way. Just keep going and you don't have to be here and that's fine. So anyway, if you would like to join our community, go to illustrationsbypete.com. You can come in, you can put your own artwork on the site and promote it. You can find some inspiration in the free reference photos. You can just use them however you want in your artwork. You do not need to credit me. Or you can come into the forums and talk to some people and maybe give some advice and maybe find a little bit of information that helps you. So come check us out. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.